Hey guys, we're gonna talk about a really good one, which I have on the video. So yeah, a, at the Dallas Sports Con, which is largely the biggest sports card selling, a person was selling fake Michael Jordan, fake LeBron James, and these fakes, I believe, came from China. Now, China has a lot of fake merchandise, as you might understand, Gucci, Nikes, uh, you know, Abercrombie and Fitz. I'm a patent attorney, uh, barred in the state of New York, so I handle, I used to handle a lot of international cases, and one of them was Abercrombie and Fitz. So people in China would, at the time, it was a very popular brand, and the only difference between, uh, uh, let's say, a $2 t-shirt and a $80 t or a $2 piece of merchandise and a $80 piece of merchandise was the Little Moose logo, which honestly took no effort to stitch. So uh, a lot of Chinese companies manufactured many clothing items. There's a store in China, an Apple store in China, which is, you know, it looks just like a real Apple store and it's fake. Like the whole store is fake. I'm not saying that they're selling fake Apple devices. I'm saying the whole store is fake. <laughs> like the entire store. And to think that Chinese counterfeiters or you know, maybe Japanese or anywhere they are would not get into a market like Pokemon, like Magic, like Yu-Gi-Oh, like sports cards would be pretty insane. Now, the people selling it are always gonna be basically non-Asians, right? Because it would be kind of weird, right? And they're gonna flip it for a ton of money. We live in a society, especially the sports culture today, where it is okay to sell fake magic cards for real. And I don't like that. Obviously, I have a massive magic collection myself, but you know, online, how they do it is they call it a proxy, they sell an Etsy, you can you can eBay, Google, you can Macario, you can go on anywhere online, they're gonna say, oh, high quality proxy, which means fake. So they are selling you a fake magic card that you're supposed to use and you know pretend it's real by just telling you it's a proxy. So there's two ways to go about it. One way is you could sell the fake card as if it was real for the fake price or for the real price, or you could sell it as a high quality proxy on Etsy or eBay or where out, you know, Craigslist. And there's no crackdown on this. Um, it's very easy to be duped if you don't have the real version. And this is why I always recommend, you know, buying single cards versus boxes. You know, I get a lot of questions about boxes and I'll, I mean, the box is real the wrapping is real, the packs in it are real. It's just that they box mapped it. So they opened a box with the specific purpose to box map it. They box mapped it, they refilled up the packs and then they sealed the box with the same sealing they just unwrapped it with carefully. And it's, uh, it's as new. So this guy got arrested and he got arrested because he was actually, he had a display table. I believe he had a display table and everything on that table was fake. And somebody came in and they noticed it and they reported him and then he tried to escape. He's a kind of a chunky individual and uh, he didn't get very far. He got about two feet before he fell down and you know, you can see all the fat and blubber kind of spill out. You have to be careful who you deal with in this hobby. Obviously we saw the Logan Paul, which took, you know, the number one authenticator, got dragged into it and got like, <laughs> dirt smeared on himself dirt you know being a substitute for something much worse i be believe and you have to be absolutely certain who you're dealing with and you know the qualities and representations and responsibilities so if you're dealing with somebody in canada who has no involvement in pokemon no social media and he found this thing in a farm he bought and he only wants $70,000 for a sealed case, which has six booster boxes, each booster box being at least worth a quarter million, then you have to, that raises a lot of red flags. So instead of trying to flip it, you might investigate it a little deeper. Same with these Michael Jordan cards, these LeBron cards and so on. He had just too many of them. He had hundreds of them. I mean, I don't know like how many people have hundreds of Michael Jordan rookie cards, but this guy did. 
I don't know how many people have thousands of LeBron James rookie cards, but this guy did. And when you're trying to flex, I think this guy overflexed, and that's what drew so much attention to his case. And, you know, then he got caught, the police confronted him, and obviously he does what most scammers do, which is try to flee. I uh, didn't get very far. People, you know, took out their phones and how do you know that your very valuable cards are not fake? How do you know this? Um, I mean, you loop it, you t light test it, you bend test it. It's all of these tests, right? But if truly the fake was really that good, it would pass all of these tests. So one of the things I always tell people and I warn people is you gotta be careful. You absolutely have to be careful and who you deal with. And if it's some fly by night, if you know, if they talk about community and charity, I find that people who talk about charity and giving back to charity all the time in the sports card community or magic or Pokemon community, they tend to be the biggest scammers. You know, when they want to hype themselves up as Mother Teresa, that person is you know, a scammer. Uh, also, when they're very nice, I know that we talk about Jacob being super nice, Card Kakuna being really nice and, you know, such a pillar of the Pokemon community. When ma people in Magic, like Alex Pachiti, and the biggest cheaters in Magic have always been the nicest people. Because, again, why would they not be nice? They're willing, winning millions of dollars by cheating. Of course they feel good about themselves, right? And being nice kind of lowers your defenses. So instead of, you know, being, hmm, this guy's kind of sketchy, let me keep my defenses up. Oh, he's so nice. And now you don't have any defenses. Who else was nice? Frank, Magic Judges. We know these people who were very predatory of young individuals in our community. They were always very nice too. Because how would you attract young people? You'd be nice to them. When no one else is giving them you know, the time of day, you, you will go out your way to invite them to your hotel room, Frank. Right? Hey, you know... I how, do you just want to come to the hotel room, young child, and I'll teach you how to play magic, the real magic? Like, dude, what the hell's wrong with you people? Like, people think nice people are always going to, uh, nice people donating. So the, the backyard card breakers, you know, I posted that video, it probably will be taken down soon. And they seem nice, they seem like nice guys, but as soon as they pull a $25,000 card, it's like, oh, me, 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 oh, I'm gonna pocket the card. And you never know, you never know, because you don't know those people in person, you don't actually live near them, you might not even live in the same country as them, so like, what recourse, so I'm a lawyer, I'm always thinking of what recourse would I have if I buy this from you and it turns out not to be what you said it is. I'm gonna sue you. I can only sue you. It would be easier for me to sue you if you were in Houston. We would go to Harris County Court, it would, or it would be easier for me to sue you if I have seen you and I know this is where you live. To sue someone in Mexico or in China, it's not going to work. So many U.S. companies, as a patent attorney, so many U.S. companies try to with Chinese patents and trademarks by the government. They try to sue these companies and the government doesn't do it. Enforcement is zero in China. So like, could just continue counterfeiting my friends because it helps your GDP. Um, so what's the point at that point? Like, you know, if, if somebody in China showed you a bunch of fake magic cards and you didn't know they were fake, well, number one, you should know they're fake. But number two, if you didn't know they were fake, you're an idiot and you can't then go off and sell them. So cards that you got for 10 cents, you can't then go off and sell for a thousand dollars a piece and not realize something is wrong. And that's the same with the Mealy Pops and Jacob. You can't buy a $70,000 case of sealed Pokemon boxes, sell it for 2.7 million and think that it's real. It, it just, illogical. Those type of deals do not exist today because we have the internet. You know how the guy communicated with you and the guy listed the thing on eBay? You don't think the guy also tried to figure out prices of boxes and stuff on eBay? Like the guy's on eBay already. He's not curious to know what this random product that he has on eBay is worth. This random sealed person. No. So again, if it's too good to be true, it's too good to be true. And with the, uh, if a guy has a thousand LeBron James rookie cards, that raises a lot of red flags, okay? Like I understand the flex culture, but 
I mean, he had a whole backpack of LeBron, Kobe, and I think he had over 100 Michael Jordan rookie cards raw. And they were all near mint in the same condition. And, oh, you know, they're, I always like, like super obvious that it was a flex, but also super obvious that no one could own that many cards of this nature, of this high end. Hi, guys. <laughs>